last year I was walking out in the rain and I found this broken umbrella lying, not this one, but uh, an umbrella like this, lying kind of by itself in a trash can, looking all depressed and sad and turned inside out in the rain. So, you know, I, I looked at it and I thought to myself, hey, you know what? It's such a pity that an umbrella like this should go into a trash can. I mean, look at it. It's perfect. Whoever the owner was is obviously kind of crazy because, like, I don't know, can't you see the potential in something like this? Well, maybe you can't. I don't know. I, I looked and I thought, you know, this is kind of interesting. There are all these moving parts, and hopefully, by the end of this video, I'll be able to show you the same thing. Anyway, before we start, let's go into a little bit of umbrella anatomy. There's the handle connected to the shaft. Usually, it's like one piece or something like that. There's a spring at the end, and at the end of this black or it can be any color really. At the end of this cloth thing there's the umbrella tip. So the shaft, the handle, and the tip are all one piece going all the way through. And for the point of this project it is just about completely irrelevant. There's also this cloth thingy-mabob connected to the shaft in usual cases with most umbrellas that are not broken by these little thingy-mabobs that um they look like this. There's a hole in it, and, um, and they're metal, and the pulls would stick in on one end like, like that, and then they would be sewn into the cloth at the other end like that. So that would attach the poles to the, um, to the fabric. So what I did was I took my fabric, cut it off, got rid of it, dissected the rest of it, and came out with some pieces that look like these. Okay, so first of all we have these long pieces. Um, just basically that's what they are, they're, they're long pieces. Um, a straight band here, and then there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little T-shaped cross bit here, like inside of this, which is shaped like a U, like that. Um, there's another smaller U, like this, which is hinged to this piece here. So, oftentimes the pieces ended up broken off on that first umbrella that I found, um, and that made it somewhat difficult to work with. But if you take apart that piece, right, you get something that looks like this. Um, oftentimes also you find that um, there are pieces here, these little these little bits that are supposed to go here, but they aren't. So I had a couple of these pieces that had separated themselves from these nice long ones. And um, you can see here, the clearly, more clearly anyway, you can see the T on them. So hinged T. And then this. Um, here you can also see that I duct taped uh, two pieces together. Because, like I mentioned before, oftentimes the tips of these are snapped. But for the purpose of making wings, you need an intact piece at the end of this. So what I did was I just took um, a piece like this that was intact but had broken off, and then I just snipped off the end of that and duct taped it onto this piece. Whether or not that duct tape will prove to be strong enough to support a wing, and I think it is, that remains to be seen, but yeah. So for the point of this experiment, or project, if you will, um, the important pieces are these three pieces, which are the long, kind of semi-intact bits of pieces joined together. One of these, the little, this piece here is kind of irrelevant, you don't really need it, but, you know, both pieces I used in for both wings um, had those on it, so, yeah. Um, then you might need like a few of these extra ones, which are the same thing as these ones, like I said. And um, if you don't want to use cloth to attach, uh, to go between the, the fingers, if you will, of the wing, then you'll want to use something like this, which would fit onto the ends of these spindles here, like that. Okay? Um, you don't really need any of these if they're broken unless you have a broken bit like this that needs fixing. In which case, yes, you'll want to slide this one on and, yeah. Okay, so let's get rid of the pieces we don't really need. Alright. So, the basic shape of this, the basic pattern that I used was styled after a bat wing. So, you first have this piece here. 
if a bat wing looks like an arm with like fingers sticking out at the end like that, then this part here would be the arm, okay? So it's going to go like this. And then you're going to have these wing pieces, uh, like the fingers of the wing, going like this. One, two, ooh, this piece has an extra one here. Very nice. And three, or backwards. So you want all of the pieces with holes in them. I don't know if you can see the holes, but one end of these, uh, each one of these, these has a hole in it. And at the other end, it just comes to a point. This is, like I mentioned earlier, where the the tip would fit on like that, okay? We don't need the tips right now. So, I also mentioned that at the end of this piece here, there's another set of holes. So what you want to do is you want to fit these pieces here into there so that the holes line up. You're only going to be able to fit about two of these holes into this space here. So the third one will have to go outside. If you can make it fit inside, that's all the better, but you know, you can't always. Then you want to take one of these pieces here, and you want to just cut off the end of one of them. You want an end, um, well, it doesn't really matter which end you got. Like, sometimes they have these little uh, rivets in there to hold things in there. Sometimes they have holes. You'll need one end with a hole that's about, like, I don't know, two or three inches long, two and a half maybe, and then one piece that just needs to be about an inch long. So here I have, like, a piece that's about an inch long. It has a hole in it. Um, and this is the piece I'm going to use to thread through the hole and through these holes and through this hole to make it all stick together. So, um, yeah, just line up the holes, thread this th piece through. You can see I, the end is silver. I had to sand down the end to make it fit because, or else it'd be a kind of tight fit. And yeah, these pieces weren't designed to go through each other like that, so I had to sand it down a bit. So I'm not going to actually attach them right now because I don't want to break out my pliers and all that stuff and I have a, a completed model so I don't need to um, do it. Or semi-completed anyway. The next piece you want is this one. So imagine for a sec that all of these, these three pieces are attached like that already. This piece wants to go and you want to bend the end of it and just kind of slide it in there. So you, in the end you're going to get a piece that sticks up by about like one and a half to two inches and it wants to go straight up with the hole at the top of this piece running so that if you drew a line from this end to the tip of this the the um, the line would go straight through the hole so you don't want it twisted like this you want it just like that okay and then so this bent the end is bent and so that it's sticking up like kind of like this okay and these pieces are not the other side, so it can't really go anywhere. The duct tape would keep it from sliding. You also are going to need some uh, string of some sort. It doesn't have to be this Power Pro fishing line that my brother gave me, but you want it to be strong because this is going to be the muscle of your wing. It's going to be the one that's taking all the force and stretching the wing open. Now I'm going to show you uh, the as it should look when it's set up correctly, um, put together correctly. Oh, you're also going to need one of these. This is a normal rollerblading gauntlet, if you will. So, looks kind of like that. Not really anything special. Um, usually you just like slide it on your hand, buckle it up, and then that way if you fall down, this piece here, this hard metal, will protect you. It doesn't really matter um, that it's strong right now. Just let it stiff and that it makes a glove. You'll see it in this project that um, that I actually flip mine upside down like that because it looks just for the sake of the looks. It doesn't really matter. You could use, um, you could use like, I don't know, two pieces of wood that are tied together. But the important thing is that it's rigid, uh, or mostly rigid, because it's strapped onto your hand. These pieces of plastic are rigid. So. When it's complete, and I'm saying complete with quotations around it, or, uh, yeah, because mine actually is not as complete as I would like it to be. It's going to look something like this. I'm going to focus on putting it on and stuff later. But the important piece is, like, you can see, here's that shaft, the one that I duct taped in the other one. You can see it's also duct taped here, not because it's broken, but because this one, uh, this piece of duct tape here is keeping this piece 
which was um, which was that short bit I showed you earlier that's bent at the end, it keeps it from sliding out. And at the back it's got this here, which is the piece that I sanded down for you, which I sanded down to fit through. It's got that kind of locking it in. Um, you can see the three different arms like this. Okay. Um, with this uh, the short sanded piece going through the center of them. You can see that only two of them actually fit inside of the prong at the end of this through the holes. The other one's kind of hanging out by itself. And, you know, if you can make it fit once again, that's better. Then you can see I used this, this red fishing line and I attached it through the hole at the top of one of the T's in the arm. And then it goes through the loop at the top here. That gives it a little bit of leverage. Here, I don't know if you can see that. This gives you a little bit more leverage, so that way, um, if, if it just goes over the top here, you can't really do much with it unless you're like Superman and you can pull and the rope will hold tight or whatever. It just gives you that leverage you need to actually raise the wing. So you can see if I pull on this, it goes up like that. Okay? That's the basic structure. I'm going to go into more into how to set this thing up a little bit later, but you want this piece here, just go through the glove. Same thing with this red wire. So, to put on the glove correctly, you just put it on like a glove, okay? It doesn't really matter if this is up or this is down. I just, I personally like this part, the, the curved part to be up, just because it looks more like a wing to me, or more like the shape of a bat's hand, because if you've ever seen a bat's hand at the end of the wing, the fingers curl down, and you know, while you could do the same thing with this underneath, it would make like a bump here, and yeah, I don't think that's really necessary. So, the important thing though, is that the short arm goes through the glove, and you remember that little uh, hinge, or not hinge, it was like a joint at the end? You want to make sure that is pointing it up like this, because if you don't, um, this bar has an annoying tendency to just slide straight through the glove, and then that kind of defeats the purpose. So, the next important thing is, like I said, the red line that goes through over the top. This also wants to go through the glove, okay? Eventually, this is going to be the, the muscle, if you will, that will pull the wing open. So, the red line goes through the top and connects to this band around my, uh, around my upper arm. You can also attach it to your sleeve, but, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. I decided to use the band because it's a little more um, compact. I can use it separately of a particular set of clothing. You could also do the same with safety pins, but I didn't. On the other side of this band is a purple line. Um, it's not important, really. Um, you could do the same thing with cloth, and that was my original intention, except that I ended up using my cloth for something else. As it is, I use the purple line attached at the end to those, um, those pole ends that I showed you before, which have an annoying tendency to fall off especially this one like yeah like that so you want to fit that as snugly as you can if you're not going to use the cloth eventually i might try and upgrade this thing to cloth so that's the sorry Stay. so that's the basic setup so once you've got it in this kind of position all you need to do is extend your arm and the wing will open the red line up here, like I said, is the muscle that pulls. So by pulling on this red line, I can make the top part of the wing open and shut. The purple line just goes and makes sure that instead of just having this bone, if you will, instead of just having this bone move independently, when it opens up, it'll pull on this, this bone. This one isn't as important so much as it's, um, this one is. This one just makes sure that this doesn't fall straight down, because if, as you can imagine, if I didn't have a line connecting this to here, gravity would pull this thing in a straight line, and then depending on where my arm was, this would move. So this just these lines just stabilize this last one, except when it comes off like that. But that's the basic setup of the wing. Just open, and shut by moving your arm in and out.